Hey everybody, just wanted to show you a little bit about uh, how I would go about adding some music cues into this post-production, you know, film sequence thing that we've been working on. Um, it's important to mention that some of you guys have very specific songs. Um, you know, there's a scene from Baby Driver that's very specific, uh, right? So it's totally okay to use the song that, you know, already belonged in there. You don't have to do something new and different just because, uh, especially in a sequence like that, um, the you know everything visual goes along to that particular music so it would be difficult to find anything else that would work you know part of this is you know the uh, the exercise here is to get things synced into the right place and mixed well with everything else um, and also to get you familiar with the idea of using temp tracks right so you may not you're not going to be composing music to this but you want to be able to use something that works and is effective so in my circumstance I don't have any specific music that I need to use in here um, but I do need to have a couple of music cues um, just to um, uh, maybe just to affect emotion a little bit, right? To hit on a couple of things. So I wanted to show you, I've already got the music in here, and I just kind of wanted to show you how it works. Um, so let's, list, um, let's do muting the, uh, the music. Let's see what happens. So here's my character on the empty street. And he walks up and he finds some corpses basically in this old vehicle and he's got the surprise of it happening right and then we find out potentially why right now when you look at my, you know, here's my regions that I've got music, you can see I've got a crossfade and some stuff there. Let's see what it sounds like now with the music. So I just wanted to, you know, I didn't want to have music the whole time. You notice there isn't any leading up to this point. Um, he's at this abandoned street. I think that works well. But then we start to, the idea of, oh wow, there's actually something creepy and some dead people around. That's when the music kicks in. So let's take a look. So he's getting curious. Oh no. You know, so I think that works pretty well. And I'll tell you that this music is just plain old generic, like cinematic royalty free music from YouTube. So anything that you could find. Um, and there's lot, you know, lots of different musical choices would work there. The reason why I like this one and the way I used it the way I did is because the beginning has this sort of like creeping in, like fade in. He's curious as he's like looking in through the the doorway there, and then I made sure that the the hit, the little the drum hit, happens right when he's like about to plop on the ground. So he figures out what's going on and he plops to the ground, and the music sort of exaggerates that. Right, it's it's intense enough where it does something to him emotionally, and that that reinforces our emotions in that sequence too. And basically, what I did here is I cut out a chunk and moved it over and crossfaded it so that another one of those hits would pop up right when we see um, you know what is potentially the cause of this problem which is the the piece of paper with the revolt thing on it so let's see how that works real quick a crossfade to get where we want it to be you can't even tell that there's a crossfade and then we see the the visual of like who who is responsible for these things. Um, so, so you know, you, using crossfades and stuff, you can pretty much use already existing music completely to your advantage. Um, and I did the exact same thing with this next sequence and that I'll show you. And this is more of a, like, hey, somebody's coming um, and building up of intensity as we wait for something to happen. So the light shines and we see something and he hides. And then we have a crossfade again just to get, as we get to the real intense part, we just make it happen. Whoa. And of course the Wilhelm scream in there. But I mean, you can tell, you can't even tell really that, 
I've got the crossfade there. I just basically shortened the amount of time where that intensity grows and rises so that it fits with my sequence. Um, and that, you know, when it gets to its most intense point, he swings the wrench, it hits the guy, and then the music fades right out. Um, so there's definitely ways that you can use those things to your advantage. Um, if you zoom in a little bit closer here, um, you'll be able to see that I also have a quick fade out at the end um, that you would want to do to avoid some of that abruptness. Um, you might even take just a tiny bit at the end if you had to end your music abruptly for any reason like that and throw a little reverb on it so it doesn't uh, so that there's like a little tail that sort of goes on but really not a ton to work with here um, w with the music you know we're just tossing in a couple music cues as necessary um, to help reinforce the emotion or if you've got one of those sequences that really needs to have a specific song like from the Lion King and you need to have Elton John doing whatever Elton John does um, then just go ahead and and do that stuff and, and really your only challenge will be finding the correct spot to put it and then making sure that the um, the volume mix is pretty good cool thanks for watching guys see you next time